Ja, men först och främst då, hur analyserar du inledningen av den allsvenska säsongen för Bayern hittills? Yeah, I mean it's not the situation we would like to be. Uh, our expectation is always to try to win every game. But at the same time uh, we knew that it was a difficult schedule. Um, I think that we need to analyze especially the performances. And I think that uh, when we look back it's only six games but uh, the reality is that we have been punished uh, really hard on individual mistakes. I think the last game for instance against North Shopping is a good it's a good example of a little bit um, when you get into that trend uh, that every small uh, detail uh, you get punished. I think it's a game where on the first 70 75 minutes we play at very at very good level not a top level we can do even better. Uh, but uh, yeah, then there is a couple of mistakes that uh, land into a goal in the first situation that they have in during the whole game. So they shoot two times on goal, they score two goals. Um, the overall is that we need to look zoom out. I think that we are calm about about uh, we know what are the things that we need to improve. And we have been talking a lot about the guys uh, that okay these individual mistakes why are happening, when we need to raise more, when we need to be more efficient if you want to call it more practical uh, and second because we are considering definitely too many goals because um, so far we score eight goals uh, it's not flawless but it is still good enough to, to get points to get even more points than we have but said that um, we need to look at the positive side of it um, uh, we have a good environment in the squad they, they, they are they are confident in our job I'm very confident on, on, on them and I think that there is a good mutual uh, confidence in to turn this situation into getting better results and at the same time, knowing that we face perhaps the four most difficult games away of the season in the first six weeks. Now we need to prove in the next games that uh, we are a better team than what the table is saying and that we need to improve in the areas that we want to improve. Det har i många år varit en stor snackis om att Hammarby alltid har varit väldigt starka på hemmaplan men på bortaplan haft det väldigt svårt. Om vi tar den här säsongen har vi full pot på hemmaplan hittills och bortaplan förlorat alla matcher. Ser du någon tydlig skillnad gällande Hammarby på hemmaplan jämfört med bortaplan i år? I mean, it's definitely a fact that when we play at home, uh, the fantastic supporters, the amazing atmosphere we have in the in the stadium help us. And this has been a strength, as you say, for years, and, and, and hopefully it will never change, because this play number 12 makes a big difference. I I'm looking forward to to play again at home. Now, as you said, from six games, four away, it's a lot. So we miss this feeling as well, this connection. Even though I need to say that uh, all the games away, we have a big, big. Uh, uh, support and we really feel that that people makes an effort to travel wherever we go. Uh, Malmo away, I think it was 2,000, almost 3,000, and, and it's, it's unbelievable the support we have. But um, I don't want to look that much at the, if you want, at the history in that sense. I think it looks almost an, as an excuse that historically Hammarby has not been good away or that has not been historically good at grass. I think that last season we proved that by training, by, by trying to challenge ourselves every day, that we can get a little bit better. And the reason why I came to Hammarby is just to, to improve, just to, to try to help the club to be better in everything. So I don't like to just accept uh, this uh, old uh, saying about uh, Hammarby has not been that good away, so it's not a big deal. I'm so disappointed that we didn't get more points. Uh, but I, as I said, I, I look at the performances. I know how we perform in the second half against Hecken. I know how we perform in the second half against Malmo. I know how we perform for 70 minutes against North Shopping. Then the target uh, is to perform at 90 minutes, no excuses, to make sure that we, the goal chances that we create, we can create even more, that we can be even more efficient when we have those goal chances, that we concede even less goal chances, that we concede less goals. So it's about uh, an improvement on, on the game at the end. And uh, that's why I'm, I'm looking forward, obviously, to play again at home. But uh, knowing that we need to, to be critical and not accept that uh, the last results were good enough. Sen du kom, du har varit väldigt, varit väldigt tydlig med identiteten som vi Hammarby ska spela efter. Eh, när resultaten går emot, hur tänker du kring att stå fast vid vårt tro på vårt spel? Look, one of the reasons last season when I came, I said that, that I was in a good club in Denmark, I was in a good project, the team was doing very well. And I decided to come to Hammarby for many reasons, but perhaps one of the biggest, it was because of the squad, the, the players we had. Uh, now we face a, a, a change in this in, during this precision where a lot of new faces came in. Some of the players came late on the market, some of the players were injured. So I think that we are still in this moment where perhaps we would like to be 
two, three months ago. So even though I came late last season, uh, the feeling is that almost the precision was more intense last season than this one. Because when we look, for instance, at Marbella, uh, I think we had 11, 12 players from the ones that are the core of the team uh, nowadays. So in some way, we need to we need to understand that in this process, players like Agus, like Adi Nalic are coming back from injuries. Uh, all the players that uh, Anton had not continuity, he came from a long uh, time injured. Uh, Simon came very late last week on the market. So in some way, we're still on this, that they are learning the way to play. The identity is very clear and then my job is to adjust to the skills because it's not the same skills that Tess had and all the midfielders who had last season or it's not the same the skills that Viktor Djokanovic has and Gura has or whatever. So we need to, to try to find a way to make them perform and a philosophy, I would say, and the philosophy actually is quite simple. It's to be a team that tries to be offensive, that tries to be dominant in the pitch through, through possession to create chances, through regain the ball very quick, to have, a, I would say, a a high tempo game as well and I know that it's very easy when things are working everybody's happy about it and, and in that sense I learned that Hammer is a very emotional club as all the football clubs all the supporters as well are emotional because that's the way it must be when it works as it worked against Sundsvall we look amazing we look fantastic and when the flow is not there because of many reasons that I need to analyze uh, then it's very easy to say ah we need to play more direct or we need to play with two strikers instead of one or instead of three it's always like this. Uh, I'm very calm about, about the fact that I know that a lot of people uh, think that the way we are trying to play is a good way for Hammarby, that, that feeds on the, the story into the, into the direction that the club wants to go. And then I'm very critical because I, I'm very aware that when this idea about playing through, I was saying many times through the positions, the pace is not that fast, it looks a bit slower and then that can create some kind of, of, of different feeling. But the intention is very clear, is to attack, to attack, to attack, to have funny games for our supporters, to have positive football and, and that's my commitment. So in that sense, uh, my job is to adjust a little bit the pieces um, for make them work in this puzzle. But uh, the philosophy is very clear. Uh, du var inne på Hammarby's spelartrupp. Om vi tar inledningen av den här säsongen så har vi sett många olika typer av startälvor. Hur har ni resonerat kring uh, spelomsättningen i vilka som får spela och så? Yeah, it's, it's always the coaching balance and this one is not easy because um, we always definitely want to build something in the long term. But at the same time, we try to analyze a lot how the performance during the week has been of the players, how they train, how was the last game. So it's always a bit of a balance. It's true that I'm, I'm not satisfied with the first six, seven games, including the, the semi-final in the cup. We had a lot of rotation and many times for reasons that actually we didn't want. But it's a bit like this. I always say the same. When, when the dynamic is good, it goes always post and in, then it's a goal. And when the dynamic is not, the results are not getting as good as, as we want, it's a little bit, all the small edges are, are a little bit against you. We just need to turn it. Uh, just going to put one example. I think that uh, Monte, for instance, is a player that we are very excited to have in the squad. I think he reached a peak of performance uh, at really high level uh, after Sundsvall during the cup. And then unfortunately he goes with the national team, he gets an injury, he got sick the week before of that and then he loses a little bit the momentum. So now we're trying to get there, uh, but, but it's not easy. He's a fantastic player in the long term, of course, he will play a lot of, a lot of minutes. But then we need to analyse how, how much we need to keep the continuity with him even though he's not at his best. Or we should give the chance to another player that perhaps is killing it on the trainings and is showing a fantastic performance level. So this is always the, the balance that we're trying. Plus the fact that we need to remember that, especially I would say that at the top it was a little bit the talks that we had with with Jasper uh, during the during the winter and with the club. I think in the long term it will be an advantage to have players with very different skills. And again, one example could be in the right wing. It's true that we have played with some other players, but mainly is Monte, is Jewel that can play in this position or even August, and all of them are very different players. Monte is a specialist in 1v1 against low blocks, left-footed, inverted winger coming in. Jewel is more a runner, he's a fantastic crossing player, he gives us this defensive stability as well. And then August is a number 10 that plays on the coming, starting from the, from the wing, just to get more space, to get in 1v1 situations, that is his best strength. So, um, this is a little bit the constellation that we need to play, depending on, on the week, depending on the game plan. And over time, I'm sure that this will be a strength. In the beginning, it's true that these relations 
need more time to settle. But uh, I think that it's a fantastic opportunity. Now Adi is coming back from the injury, showing better and better. He is again a player that is not a specialist in only one position, but in two or three, I would say. And then uh, trying to keep this foundation from the last season that we had, uh, especially in the midfield. We had Lord and Nahir as a very important uh, part of the team, Edwin and Mats. Plus Oliver, I would say that this frame is something that we try to keep to give more calm, to give more stability to the young players. And then we are trying to find, as I said, August, we start with a very clear idea, then he gets an injury, now he's back. Victor is growing, he's growing as well into different positions. So we're trying to make it work. And then my job is to make it work uh, the sooner the better, to, to reinforce all the skills of the players. Om vi tar lite mer i närtid då. Det är måndag idag. Imorgon har vi match mot Mjällby på hemmaplan. Vi mötte ju dem som var inne på i, i kuppsemin där. Eh, vad har du lärt dig från den matchen och vad tror du vi får för typ av match imorgon? Well, I think that it's going to be... Obviously there are some things in common in the fact that Mjölby has as well a very clear identity. They always play with this back five, they always play... Um, a football based on counters, a football based on their physicality, on, on set pieces as well. So they are very clear on the, on the way of playing and, and, and we do as well. But I think it's going to be completely different games. Uh, first and uh, most important is because it's not a, a semi-final anymore, it's, a cup, it's not a cup game, but it's a league game. Which means that uh, we know that playing at home it's totally different. The surface will be totally different, so we know that the Tele2, the, the pace on the ball, um, as long as there is water enough, it's very, it's very fast and that helps to our game. Which, when we play in Strand Valley, was the first grass game in the season. In my opinion, was not a good football pitch, uh, even though it was good conditions for what is in Swedish standards at that time of the year. But it's still not an optimal pitch to play a fast football, a technical football. And then as well, that uh, I'm sure that we learn a little bit from that game on how to attack a back five, on how to attack a very low block. Um, I want to see tomorrow a team that is very brave on, on the way we attack, that it's uh, stable as well in the way we defend. That uh, yeah, we are learning through the through the weeks on how to get a little bit the best of, as I said, of all the new players. And then from that, uh, we know that it's not an easy game. Even though Mjolby has conceded a lot of chances, he's not conceding that many goals. Um, and as well, they start the precision, I would say, in a very good, good, good trend. Now they are still a very difficult team to play against, but we need to prove that at home uh, we can be really, really strong. Till sist, uh, ja, men du var inne på det. Vad vill du se från från laget imorgon? I want to see a team. I always say the same when I say that the team. I want a team that plays with personality. I mean a team that that trusts each other. A team that has a great connection with the, with the supporters in terms of the effort that they put into it. That we need to value that <laughs> some people struggle just to, to, to come to our games and, to, and, and it's a big part of their lives and we need to give them something back. Uh, I hope that the team uh, has a fantastic pace on the ball, that has a fantastic uh, commitment to regain the ball very quick that wants to attack all the time uh, through playing an offensive football, through, through attacking the box again and again. And I want to see that the supporters enjoy that. This is my target. Then we need to prove them that even though perhaps the flow sometimes is not there, that therefore the commitment, the, the, the motions that we put into it is, is, is 200%. And then I'm sure that uh, the supporters will understand that now that is when I know that many people can be mostly disappointed or more critical. I think that Hammarby has this special thing. Uh, that they is when they have the capacity to help us the most, to connect the most. Because I remember last season when we had some moments that perhaps the team was not playing at the top level, they really help us. I think that's a, that's a difference between other other supporters that I've been experienced. And I'm sure that tomorrow they're going to be there for us and, and to help us to win this game. Thank you for the time, Matti. Thanks, Amiko, for the time. See you tomorrow.